Hello, everyone. I'm Stanley Smith, and welcome to Project, this Project Windows uh, workshop. It's uh, my joy and honor each year to facilitate and coordinate Project Windows in partnership with the Art Institute of Chicago. And each year, we're inspired by a particular artist. And this year, it is the artist Paul Cezanne. And this show will be on exhibit at the Art Institute from May 15th until September 5th this year. Uh, each year, Project Windows inspires people to uh, participate in a window display contest where they can create a storefront display or in-store activation or even a uh, experience for customers inside their retail or business establishment. Now, you might wonder why our first stop is Paris when this is supposed to be all about Chicago. And that's because uh, not only is um, Suzanne from Paris and uh, his artwork got to start in Paris, um, also the industry of retailing and uh, modern day merchandising, in fact, uh, finds its home and starting place in, in France, in Paris in particular, with the development of the early arcade system. So in the transition between the medieval uh, city of Paris, which was a thicket of buildings and uh, uneven and uh, rather uh, dirty and messy streets, in interior uh, arcades were created to allow pedestrians to diverse the city. And this naturally, where the people are, there's retail. Uh, retail uh, sprang up along these arcade routes throughout the city. And that was the, uh, the precursor to the modern day department store. This is Galleries Lafayette in Paris. And this is obviously on par with uh, the Marshall Field uh, legacy and history right here in Chicago, the Marshall Field's flagship store on State Street. Now, all of this presentation we in the background, we have artwork of Paul Cezanne, and that's indeed who we're taking our inspiration for uh, from this year as part of our Project Windows experience together. Uh, but we're also couching it in the in the the hallmarks and the the framework of retailing and commerce, which is so important to culture and society right here in Chicago, as well as around the world. Some people in the, in the time of this transition between the medieval period and the industrial age, you know, kind of decried the, the loss of a, what they perceive as a more gentle and uh, friendlier, accessible time. This is the uh, traditional storefront, which one might've seen uh, during this transitional period, which really is just of the trade or guild at the time. This is the bakery. And, simply just a storefront to display all the wares to tell passerby what the business is and what they're in uh, the business of doing. So um, be mindful of that and uh, the legacy of the modern day department store and how it relates to your particular situation. This is the uh, at the partner's breakfast at the Art Institute with uh, Gloria Groom on my left and participant Anne Latinovich on my right. Um, Gloria is the curator of 19th century art, and she's working along with Caitlin Haskell at the Art Institute, who is the curator of modern art. Uh, Cezanne actually bridges the gap, uh, just like the medieval period and the modern age, uh, between the modern and the work of the 19th century. Gloria uh, is a um, terrific and inspiring curator, and she spoke at our partner's breakfast along with Caitlin, who also provided additional nuance and information about this important artist. Uh, this is a, uh, in the background is a portrait of a picture of the, the bathers. And I was so struck by uh, the color, <laughs> the colors and combinations in this, this artwork and how it related to this window display last summer at Macy's. So this is an example, our, our go-to uh, topic for the topic of window display is always color in addition to layout, layering, composition, use of light. Uh, and this is a great example of using what you have. Macy's was telling a story about this uh, abstract uh, dressing uh, combination of blocking colors and that they weren't, they weren't pairing it with this particular artwork, but they, they certainly could have. And you can too, if you're interested in a particular image or inspiration, I will be including a uh, access to a deck of all the photos of the, of the artwork if you'd like to be inspired. But this is a great, a great example of being inspired and showing what you already are planning to be presenting this spring and summer. Uh, this is a display at the Christian Dior store on Walton Street in downtown Chicago, and it's an example I'm using of the use of color. So in the background, we have Suzanne's Apples, a famous work, and uh, the idea of 
using a strong color. Now, yellow does seem to be the color for this spring, at least here in Chicago and New York. And um, we have these yellow mannequins, which is making a very bold and dramatic statement. If you're a novice or a newbie, color is always the winning ticket. Uh, it, makes, it grabs people's attention. It creates a focal point. It accomplishes a lot of the things uh, that you might want to think about accomplishing. But if you can't accomplish everything, if you can use a strong color, you'll be one big step in the right direction. Uh, the idea of creating a strong shape. So this is a display at Brown Elephant last summer during the Obama portrait inspired contest. And they created a very strong shape, which is the pyramid. And it exemplifies the idea that creating one big shape in your window space can, can create a focal point. You don't necessarily have to fill up the entire space. You can just create a focal point with a strong central shape. Uh, this is the still life of flowers by Paul Cezanne, and it's in a window display. I'm coupling it with a window display in Lakeview. And the idea of the still life, Glory Groom pointed out to us at the presentation that still life is central to the work of Paul Cezanne. Most of his works are indeed still lives. And I especially appreciate it when Gloria was talking about it because I was, I was amused with the idea that coming out of the pandemic, pandemic, this is exactly what we want to see and be reminded of is the fact that there is still life. This is an example of a still life composition in the window display, which couldn't be much simpler. Uh, this was inspired by the Andy Warhol show at the Art Institute a couple of years ago, and it was a fun and uh, simple way. It was, it was kind of surreal and kind of Dada-like, uh, combining a couple of different art genres into one. But I think it was immediately recognizable as Andy Warhol inspired, and it, again, couldn't have been simpler. The use of light is always a strong, a strong point that we look for when we, send, when we send out the judges. And every year, we do give an award for the best use of light. This is at the AT&T store, AT store on Michigan Avenue. It was inspired by the art of Vincent Van Gogh at the bedroom. And it was very dramatic. And actually it was had an interaction, had an interactive component where people could go up to the window and press those, those panels and the, uh, the lighting transition would, would be altered. So that was, that was, if you're in the technology business, which AT&T is, then I recommend this approach to you. But for the rest of us, perhaps it's just as simple as shining a spotlight can just make all the dramatic difference in your storefront display. Shining a spotlight on your composition uh, can sometimes just transform whatever you're doing. This, this display is at the Essex Hotel and it was for the Monet show. And I'm using this as an example of layering, the idea of using space and using depth in the window. Even if you have a small space, you can uh, create some depth by placing items full further back in the window space. Things don't have to be pasted to the window or flush against the window. They can, whenever you create space, it draws the viewer in because it's, it's inviting them in. This is also a great example of color and shape because we have a pretty strong color palette here and very strong discernible shapes. This is the, conveying the idea of whimsy or most amusing. Every year we do in fact give a, an award most often for the most amusing. And this was at a restaurant in Lakeview area. And this actually was actually outdoors at the uh, entrance to the restaurant. And it was on display all summer. And uh, it was innovative and it was amusing. It was a toast to Michelle and Barack Obama uh, in honor of the Obama portraits, which were, which were on display last summer at the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, this display is an example of texture and also color, but a uh, strong theme that's been emerging is the idea of texture, that coming out of the pandemic, many people are, are looking for a tactile experience, something they can reach out and touch, experience texture. Uh, if you did see the, the Bisa Butler uh, exhibit last summer, you might have been uh, intrigued by the tremendous texture and surface of the art, which was remarkable and truly something you had to see in real life. So next to color and yellow, Texture, think about texture. Um, this is a display at the uh, a bike shop where Mr. Obama purchased a bike when he was living here in Chicago. And it uh, kind of conveyed the idea of a strong shape, strong use of color, and a little whimsy. We're pairing it with the Wendella boat rides. And then as we move to the end of our workshop, we're, we're seeing people, which is exactly what we want to be seeing as we move 
through our transitional period from the pandemic into a, uh, a new reality here in Chicago, we definitely want to see and welcome people with these dramatic and lovely window displays. And here we are with a lovely floral piece that was on display also outdoors last summer in honor of the Bisa Butler and Brock Brock and Michelle Obama portraits. And this is paired with the Metro because we're certainly hoping that uh, people will be trucking in to your community on CTA and Metro lines this spring and summer. And also this display also conveys the idea of the strong sensation, just an immersion of color and texture, which is something that Gloria uh, Glory Groom did mention at the uh, partners breakfast that uh, previous to this, Paul Cezanne was, was somewhat less accessible to her, but she found new appreciation working with Caitlin Haskell, the, uh, the modern curator, in that uh, they've discovered together this idea of strong sensation. So between the use of color and light and texture, creating a strong sensation for people. And again, coming out of the pandemic, a strong sensation might be foreign to us, but it might be exactly what's needed. And um, the idea of composition, this is a display at the Blackstone Hotel for the Monet exhibit, and it essentially is a monochromatic display with very little color at all, but they're creating a strong visual with a terrific composition of discernible shapes and a layout. They're creating depth and they're creating interest, which draws the viewer in. And we're pairing this with the bean again, those people, there they are. <laughs> they are indeed a welcome sight this spring and summer. At the end of our journey together this summer, we will have awards given for the best displays. We always give a, an award for the, the best use of color, uh, best composition, best use of shape, best use of light, most amusing, most engaging, most interactive, plus a people's choice, which is facilitated uh, via Instagram. The uh, exhibit opens on May 15th and ends on Labor Day. And we're inviting people to, to obviously have their windows in as close as they can to the beginning of the exhibit, but the judging period, period uh, on Instagram will begin mid-June and the professional judging will take place in early July. The awards will be announced at the end of July with, a, with an awards party in early August. So that's our timeline. I think that's workable. It gives you plenty of time to be inspired, but not, but not too much time because we want people to be uh, timely and uh, included in this, this wonderful journey and visual experience for us and for our customers. The Project Windows judging team is a panel of seven local civic leaders, uh, leaders in hospitality, retail, design, the arts, and culture. And they will be out this summer taking a look at your winning display. Uh, I'm available to help assist in all ways possible. I have a bevy of artists and designers who are clamoring for a partnership. And Nora and her team at the Art Institute have uh, resources and collateral material to assist you as, as well. I will include my name and uh, contact information and uh, the invitation as well to explore with me the, the deck of images to be inspired by as you work <laughs> on your winning uh, display this spring and summer. And I look, I look so much, I look so forward to this, this journey together of emerging and putting the spotlight on everything that's, that's going right here in Chicago, in your business and in your community this spring and summer. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.